So yeah, if you, if you guys don't mind, you said like much because I'm, I'm recording for, uh, for my podcast. Oh, they can hear Diane and me in Fresno. Don't worry. There you go. We may not even need the mics. That's excellent. Okay. We got a minute. I'll give it another one more minute. See if You don't want to mess in. Yeah. Well, I'm glad you all made reservations. What a packed house. Social distancing. You're missing Kevin, I know. Oh, yeah. Kevin decided not to be here this weekend, but to be in Raleigh. Ooh. Ooh. Okay. In the Griffin country. But you have matches below. But George Clooney has come as Batman. <laughs> How many Batmans have they been on screen? Oh God, many. Yeah. 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 The guy from the 40s, the Cliff Bat guy. Val Kilmer. Val Kilmer, Adam West. Yeah, that, that my Clooney. reference was, yeah, Clooney. Um, Adam West. Well, Adam West is still everyone's favorite. Ben Affleck. Ben Affleck. Michael Keaton. Ben Affleck. Oh, Ben Affleck. That's right. That's right. Um, Robert Patterson will be. Who else? Christian Bale. Bale. Of course, my yes. Christian Bale. Wow, that's right. What was his name? What was his name? What was his name? Now, did he get both cereals or just the one? I think he only did the one. Okay, so wow, wow, that's, that's a great trivia. Lewis couldn't make it to the panel today. <laughs> 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 Thank you. 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 Speaking to us with a great beyond. I like it. Oh, man. I still haven't seen that. Has, has anyone seen the cliffhanger? Is it all right? It's great. It's great. There you go. They used to run it, I think, at, uh, at the Playboy Mansion. The Hefner was a big fan of the cliffhangers. I know that. You should know that. You know, the serials uh, from, the, uh, from the 40s. The from the 40s? Yeah. Oh, wow. You know, you know, like, like, like the old Flash Gordon? Right. Right. Wow. Yeah, they did Batman. They did Superman. And they always ended with yeah. someone falling off a cliff. It's a literally hence yes. right. yes. the title. Like the Pearls of Bull. You got it, you got it. We're dating ourselves. Which I like you're dating yourself. <laughs> <laughs> well, you won't date me, so I got to date He's taken. Oh, man. All right, let's begin. Yeah. Welcome to the Batman and Animated Series Tribute Panel. It's great to be here. Thank you very much for coming. I hope you're enjoying the first time. Thank you. It's great to be here. Thank you very much for coming. I hope you're enjoying the first time. My name is John Summers. I'm a uh, host of a podcast called Word Balloon, and uh, I'm very honored to be talking to our panel today. Uh, we'll, we'll start off uh, at the extreme, well, from our perspective, it's uh, the left. Uh, the man who uh, voiced uh, Dick Grayson, Robin, and Nightwing, among other roles, Lauren Lester. She comes on like a rose, because everybody knows it's uh, our own poison ivy, it's Diane Pershing. And the man that's always ready to interrogate with the wearing a cape or a mask, he wants to know the business and stuff. It's hard to believe himself, I understand. Got a problem with that? <laughs> oh, welcome, guys. And truly, isn't it amazing? Did you ever think, and not to date ourselves, but around 30 years ago, the Batman animated series that we're still talking about it today? I didn't realize it was that long. Well. It's oh. going to be 30 years yeah. next year, wow. 1992. Wow, you were an ingenue, I was a young leading man, and this was... You know, barely out of school. <laughs> and and I was a child. Forgive me, of course, at our extreme left, I, I, I forgot to acknowledge that sitting on the panel as well, it's our own Dark Knight, the Batman, ladies and gentlemen. The Batman. <laughs> We forgot to mention him when we went over the, the different characters, who, men who played. This is true, yeah, he's exactly the same man. We, we ignored you, even though you're in your athletic suit. So, so you look good. Thank you. I try to keep the shape. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> you look better, So, if I can, if we yeah, can, let's go down the road. Honestly, um, when you audition for the role, just, I mean, and, and certainly like Diane, I, I can't wait to talk to you about some of your other animated roles because I've been a fan for a very long time and, and you've been into some incredibly iconic characters. But uh, truly, Diane, let's start with you. Like, become, being poison army, you know, yeah. You know, can you take One of my audition? favorite, yeah. Yeah, life is made up of serendipitous moments where you have no idea that the next thing that happens to you is going to change your life. It's just that simple. And I was hired, uh, Batman wasn't on yet, they were doing the first season, <laughs> and the, 
the, uh, the episode that introduces Poison Ivy is called Pretty Poison. Is that where I kiss you? I think so. Wow. I think so. Yeah. And um, I was hired that day to do what they call incidental voices. Um, a secretary, um, you know, one-line stuff. And what happened, the actress that was supposed to do Poison Ivy, either she, the producers decided to replace her or she didn't show up or whoever, whatever. And our lovely director, Andrea Romano, oh, came over to me and said, would you like to audition for this? And I went, sure, because you always say, sure, when they say that. And she showed me a picture of Poison Ivy, and I thought to myself, she's sort of a hormonal um, Tinkerbell. <laughs> you know, I mean, that's what she looked like. And I thought, oh, I can do her. I have my cosmetic voice. I use this voice when I do cosmetic commercials. Okay. Then she said, wait a minute, she's also a PhD, Dr. Pamela Isley. And I went, ah, that voice with a little edge to it so that you know there's a brain behind it. I auditioned, and I got it. <laughs> and I did it for nine years. And it was life changing. I mean, I'm sitting here. Would I be sitting here if I hadn't done that? Probably not. That's awesome. And I agree. Even subsequent to those nine years, uh, you know, you've done video games. And oh, I've done all kinds of things. Yeah. Yes. I mean, I'm a working voiceover actor. Absolutely. That's yeah. what I am. Well, I've made my living and things. And an authoress. She's quite a writer. Yeah. Yes, you are. And a singer. And a singer. Wow. And a heck of an engineer. I have a. <laughs> <laughs> I do have a very, I've had a very history, uh, career, I've never been bored, and it's been a lovely life. So there. Well, I'm going to talk to you about a few of your other roles uh, when we get back to you. But first, Lauren, you were there from the beginning, right? Uh, yes, the um, pilot uh, was recorded with uh, Robin, and it was actually a different cast. It was a different... Uh, really? Yep, yeah, it was a different Joker. It was played by uh, Tim Curry. Who actually went on to do I think eight episodes and they changed his voice. They they revoiced it with Mark, Mark Hamill. And uh, the um, Alfred was Clyde Reville. Mm -hmm. Wow. And he actually went on to do a few episodes, but then he was replaced well. So they did the pilot and then I didn't hear from them for a while. I think they did 14, 15 episodes and I thought I'd gotten fired or something. <laughs> it wasn't the case, they just we're gonna introduce Robin later. So yeah. Well, there was no other Robin, that's right. No, no, no. There was no other Robin, but they didn't have Robin in the, right. in the first 15 episodes. So anyway, uh, that's, and I auditioned for it, uh, just like every other job that I have auditioned for it. Diane and I had a history leading up to that. We were in a series called Defenders of the Earth. I was Rick Gordon, the son of Flash Gordon. Son of Flash Gordon. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And Diane was the sexy computer voice. Well, but also... Am yes. I right, Diane? Yes. Please tell her. Right. Isn't that um, the dead wife? Of yeah. Still right. yeah. 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 I mean, and again, you go back to to the first filmation. Oh, well, I was I, in filmation. I did Dale uh, Dale Orton in Flash Gordon. Oh, God. Yeah. I did I did ISIS in. Uh, <laughs> yes. Yeah. yeah. In, in Here's Costa. and and also I did Earl Pureheart in the Mighty Mouse cartoon. Very oh, true. Oh, 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 oh. Yeah. Yeah, that was fun. That's awesome. That's fantastic. So when when we when I got the job and I saw Diane there, it was, it was very exciting. But I, I just thought, oh, this is going to be another nice, you know, gig because I didn't finish the Earth and Jedi. I thought, oh, what another nice gig, you know? And had no idea, like you said, thirty years later, we'd be talking about it. It's amazing, really amazing. It was a groundbreaking show. It's that yeah. simple. It really Absolutely. was. Yeah. 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 So Bob, you know, yeah, tell us how you got it. Oh wow, with me. So having done, I usually was doing much on-camera work, and then I started to uh, move into the field of animation, and uh, I'm trying to remember this sort of chronology, the sequence, but uh, the two really main ones I got was, of course, Bullock and then Philoctetes, which uh, my dear friend Danny DeVito, thank you, decided not to reprise his role in the animated series. First day, yeah, for Hercules. And then I went in just to read for Andrea, and she said she liked me right away, but she did bring me back. And uh, 
She said, Bobby, you were this role was made for you. And I said, good. I'm tired of doing, you know, Olivier kind of impressions of some John Gilbert. And there I am, you know, look, Diane looks a little bit, but not completely like Poison. I, I completely look like Bullock, of course. You know, Bullock is actually classier than most of the guys I play on camera. So I, you know, I had to sort of, you know, carry grab myself up a bit. No, but it, it, it was a great fun. And one of the wonderful things about it is we approached it as if, you know, we had these, we had, you know, Edward Asner, Ron Perlman, and really wonderful actors, you know, with Gravitas who would come in and Andrea approached it like it was a, you know, a film or, or, or theater. And uh, I think the results show it. I think it's, uh, it, it, the noir look of the, uh, you know, that Bob did with the, you know, reprising the whole look of the comic back from the 30s. And then what well, we brought to it, and I guess we didn't know how good it was going to be. And, we had no idea. And we had no idea, and um, thank goodness it's been a, a wonderful experience. And from there, I did other animated characters, the most bizarre of which no actor has ever, can ever make this claim, my weirdest job ever. Are there any children here? I played the voice of Katie Holmes's vagina once. That's the truth. My agent called me and said, the Seth MacFarlane wants you to come in and do... Katie, you, know, you saw that episode? Yeah. No, but you know, I don't think they ever showed it. Gee, I no, sir, I wonder why. <laughs> because I walked into the booth and, uh, and I said to Seth, uh, you know, how, how do you... How do I prepare for this, you know? <laughs> Being a method guy, you know. <laughs> Which side of the Latvia do we do? <laughs> you know, anyway, I walked out. So the whole idea, the whole idea was that uh, Tom was not too uh, romantically involved with her. They were at a dinner, and I was the voice down below screaming, yo, what are you going to pay me a visit over here? <laughs> <laughs> anyway, you know, my chance of doing Othello in the old Vic ended after that. No, that was fun. So wait a minute, the vagina was from Brooklyn? <laughs> she was from the Midwest. Yeah, I put that. But uh, anyway, I, I love the whole animated world. And uh, this, this Batman thing is taking on a life of its own. It really is. I think we're doing another... Uh, when are we doing that? It's September? Well, you are. I have a family wedding. I can't be there. Oh, wait, no. Yeah, I'm sorry. Oh, good. Well, you can call it in. Right? No, no. no. Okay. okay. Where you live? It's a family. Um, Rock, Rock. Oh, with the Batman thing, I think. Oh, but yeah, where's the worst? Oh, I don't know. I think it's going to be in Ontario, Canada. Have you heard about this? No, no, no it's Ontario and you're LA. Oh, Ontario. Oh, did I say Canada? Yeah. I meant they were LA. Oh, well, I'm geographically hopeless. You're right, Ontario. That's right. I did Ontario a couple years ago. Yeah. Anyway, thanks to all, all of you for coming. This is terrific, you know, and. Uh, yeah, we always fire away. Away. yeah, we hope there's questions. Obviously, we've got the microphone up here, but I, I, I still have more questions. Now, laterally from uh, Robert's experience with Seth MacFarlane, Lauren, I noticed among your friends, you did an Oval episode. Yeah, that was one of my most enjoyable experiences on all of television. He is just an amazing guy. He is a, a Renaissance fan. He's a, a writer. He's a director. He's an actor. He's a genius. He's a genius. And, and uh, on the set, you know, uh, he'd be, you know, looking at his lines or running his lines in his scene with me, whatever he was doing. And they would bring him, like, these pictures, uh, the, not the pictures, but these models of sets for the, for the next week's episode. Sure. What do you have? Uh, yeah, that's okay. We'll just move that over there. Okay, back to the lines, you know, and then, then he'd be off in the writer's room and writing. Really amazing and a, a really, really terrific, decent person. Like the Russell Wells of our time. Yes. Right, right, right. I mean, very, very just very a Renaissance multi town. And, and have you ever heard him sing? He oh sings my like God. Yes, he's amazing. Yeah, really does great with great American song. And he finds these great, obscure Jimmy Van Heusen, yeah. you know, Jules Stein, or not Jules Stein, uh, you know, name the great songwriters and stuff. Things like throwaway songs from like a Bob Hope and Big Crosby Road picture. And he does them, as you said, as well. He weaves them right into the. Uh, amazing. Amazing. No, I'm with you. Um, well, and also, uh, Lauren, I, uh, among your other DC universe <coughs> uh, roles, I see that you played Manda. Yes, that was for a video game. That's cool. Yeah, yeah. Arkham Asylum, uh, one of them. And, uh, and also Green Lantern, uh, Hal Jordan. Yeah, that's right. That was for Batman Brave and the Bold. 
Excellent. Very good. Well, I heard another really good series. Both, both of those series was pretty funny when, when they when they said they were bringing into the video game or, or Batman Brave the Bold. Oh, I'm I'm going to be Nightwing. And no, I was at <laughs> that. And then uh, they brought me in for uh, Green Green Lantern, which was Andrea's idea. They appreciated your versatility. And you right. Well, Thank you. Yes. No question. And also, I loved uh, Lauren. I'll stick with you for a second because I, I also love the fact that when you started as Dick Grayson. It was a more mature Robin that actually became Nightwing, right? And then he became even more mature when he became Nightwing, which is great. Yeah, absolutely. It started him in college age, and then he became his own man. He became his own own hero. Yeah. No, very, very cool. Diane, uh, great roles, like you mentioned. Uh, Isis. And isn't it a shame that now when you say Isis, everybody thinks of the terrorist group? <laughs> but truly, I mean, in the 70s, this was a great creation. And really, it's one of uh, the iconic female heroes of uh, the DC universe. And because it was in the 70s, <coughs> sorry. Is that pausing to yeah, sorry. Through, I have almost no memory of doing it. Is that true? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I know what it was. It was obviously one I'm serious. I, did, wow. I mean, when you had a career that's lasted as long as I have, you don't remember everything you've done. I vaguely remember. I know what you're was, it, was I on a horse for that? I don't remember a horse. I know you flew. I flew. I'll, you know, I know that. And, and also, filmation in those days, back in the 70s, you went from one to the other to the other to the other. You did a lead in this and a voice in this and a this and a that. And I did a whole bunch of them. And people say, how was it doing this and that? And I say, I have no idea. <laughs> I understand. Because, I mean, I, really, I do remember doing Poison Ivy. That's cool. And we can get back to books and I because and actually, I can remember many things since then, but you know, guys, four about, years ago. How about Dale? Dale Art? Because, I love you doing Dale. Because I can remember when the series premiered, it was they, they showed it as a movie of the yes, week. Yes, they did. Yeah. I mean it was on NBC, everybody. It was so cool. You know, yeah, and it was like a big deal. And 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 again, the one thing about filmation, filmation gets a knock on its animation comparatively to the animated series, right. the Batman series. But I think their strength was always their scripts. Their scripts and the fact that there was a coterie of really good voice actors that they yes. used all the time. We did, we all did everything, you know, for years. And it was such a joy to work for them. And they're both gone now, both, both the guys. Yeah, the Shire and, uh, and you know, Bob, uh, 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 no. Not Bob, Prescott, Bob Prescott. Wow, Thank there you, you go. Yeah. Yeah. You're the player. 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 the player. You're 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 the it's available on, on DVD. I absolutely, if you've never seen Flash Gordon, it is a fantastic representation of it's the It's not the words. best animation. No, no. It, but it's fun. It's fun and it's good acting, truly. And good writer, honestly. So there you go. So, Bob, uh, among your fine iconic roles, we've mentioned animation, but of course on camera, so many great things. And um, tell me about your relationship with Billy Crystal because you've done several movies with Billy. Yeah. How did it start? And it started. It started, it, it started uh, playing softball when I came out here in the late when I came out here in the late seventies. We all were, you know, a lot of New York guys, a lot of frustrated athletes who became actors because they couldn't hit the curve, and you know, and so let's try acting. And among the guys playing ball, we'd all meet at Fairfax High School with Billy. Uh, Adam Arkin, Jeff Goldblum, all these guys. And as a matter of fact, I, I used to say that the, the better the actor, the worse small they, they were. It was almost a, 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 you know, a true direct proportion. But anyway, Billy played. And then we all started playing the Broadway show league. And Billy and I hung out. We started talking about the Yankees and trivia. And he started putting me in stuff. And a uh, wonderful uh, uh, relationship. We did about four or five things together. Uh, I met, as a matter of fact, one of them, um, uh, forget Paris, I had one line, he said, Billy, he says, don't worry, Bobby, I'll expand it. I go, yeah, we've heard that song before. But he did, to his, you know, because 
But I trusted him and he made it into a really lovely little park and all. So, uh, yeah, so it was playing ball and, you know, arguing about, uh, you know, the Yanks and the Dodgers back in the day. And Billy's quite a ball player. But we don't really know ball. I was literally watching him and Conan O'Brien at Yankee Stadium from like 20 years ago. Yeah. At doing batting practice. Yeah. And was yeah, Billy can play ball. As a matter of fact, I remember with the Yankees, he, he played in an exhibition game once. Yeah. yeah. No, he's, He's good, so that's how that started. We, yeah, we've worked a good year together. Your most iconic role, I would say, is uh, bring your bring your dad to uh, class. You know, kind of a show and tell. Oh, the city slickers, and Billy's waiting to speak, and uh, Bob steps up. If you guys know the movie I'm talking about, anybody? No. Very good. Okay, so it's a lovely scene. It starts at the crack of my butt and moves out. <laughs> Oh gosh. Anyway, he's telling a great story that if you're a comic book fan, you immediately think of the Incredible Hulk. Because as, as Bob yeah. says, you know when you're in stress and you guys you suddenly find yourself with superhuman strength. Yeah, Billy of course is uh, is sort of not doing well with his own kid, you know, all his marriage is kind of splintering and he comes there and he's gotta follow this big, you know, noisy dramatic, dramatic crazy over the top of guy and Billy's sitting there. It was funny and uh, it became kind of, like you said, iconic. I once was trying to get to the theater in New York, this is a true story, and we were like late, and all of a sudden this uh, cop car pulls up, uh, actually can't pulls up, I'm sorry, they were, they were on the couple of cops, and the guy goes, where are you going, Mr. Costanza? And I go, to the theater, but I don't know if I'm gonna get you. Get in. He said, if you do your monologue for me, I'll get you there one time. <laughs> and I had to try to like say sometimes, but that one is still ingrained in my so I was able to do it and get to the theater. And my friend Claire, who was this kind of classy uptown woman, she passed away a couple of years ago. She was like my wife and I. Was a, you know, she was like our, our friend from the round table, very sophisticated. Claire was Rob, I am really impressed with you now. You did, how did you do that? You know, she thought that was kind of a, she wondered why my wife married me, you know. And she said, wow, Bobby got us to the theater on time. <laughs> Uh, Lauren and I, I wanted to acknowledge a couple on camera things besides uh, the Orville. Um, you are not, a, um, and now I'm blanking, uh, Punisher. Um, damn it. Uh, HBO. Oh, uh, uh, yes. You talk about the actor who played Punisher. Yeah, the lead. Yeah, the lead. Yeah, shame on Thomas Jane. Tom Jane. Yep. So you yeah, have a really funny HBO series. Oh, yeah, with Thomas? Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. And we did 61 with Billy with Thomas. He played Mickey. Why? He was Mickey Mouse. Yeah, you guys said that in uh, common. That's yeah. right. Robert was, uh, Robert was too short. And, uh, I did, right. So you did, you did a series? I did a series with him called Hung on HBO. Uh, last oh, Hung, no, right. right. Lasted three seasons. Yeah. And, uh, yeah. Yeah, right. yeah it, was, uh, it was a very funny show. And I, w I was surprised that it didn't go beyond three seasons. Everybody was. But I think at the time, HBO, um, they, they had their, their launch night, I think it was Sunday. Yes, it is. Right. And they said, we, we've got to launch a new show, and so they, you know, picked it wow. up. Wow. Yeah. Is everybody watching The White Lotus? Oh, it's so good. Have you not, HBO, you guys? The White it's Lotus? So yes. Oh, good. my God. Oh, I've got to watch it. I didn't know. Yeah, it's so great. I've got to watch it. What is HBO? HBO Max. Oh, Max. Yeah. Yeah. You know what? I'd say another, another great HBO Max mm -hmm. show, I'll, I'll even throw it out there. Hacks. Oh, you know, yeah. It's great with Judy Smart. Yeah. Man, she is yeah. so good. She can do many. She can do yeah, She's, she's yeah. the best. Absolutely. Yeah, I agree with Are that. we talking about people too old for some of you or most of you to <laughs> identify with? And, and truly, folks, if you have questions, I mean, again, my folks are I'm happy, to, I'm happy to talk to everybody. We have plenty. Batman, if you have questions, I don't know. You seem to know all of them. So I can appreciate you just. Contemplating. Batman is just being silent and quiet. I, 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 I just want to say I, I enjoy your questions because they, these are not usual questions. Oh, thank you. Thank you. I did a podcast with you. I had a great time. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Honestly, no, I, I think we all want to hear stories about making the animated series. But by the same token, like you guys said, you guys have very wide careers, and let's talk about these other projects. Absolutely. So, you know, and again, man, like you said, Lauren, uh, Hung was a great series. Very timely, too, because Tom Sheen gets downsized, doesn't know what to do, but it's a male prostitute. Okay. That's a curious word we use for Hung downsized. <laughs> was that intentional? Okay. You're faster than I am. That's very good. Okay. Uh, but no, absolutely. Uh, Oh, and Diane, uh, yes. again, another series 
that's currently in the news is uh, a new version of He-Man and the Masters of the Universe that Kevin Smith has done, but you've got a history in that universe on the she ra series. I do? Yes, you do. <laughs> <laughs> you were a character called Natosa. Well, Natosa. Natosa. Oh, you were Natosa. I could never be hired for Natosa today because I am the wrong color, the wrong skin color. This oh, is wow. Yeah. Are you really she's she's a, a, a beautiful black island woman. So I got to talk, I got to do a black island woman. Sure. And it was wonderful, much fun, but now I would not be getting that job. But I did have a lovely time. You know, we love as actors, especially voice actors, to be asked to do accents yeah, sure. and different ages and different pitches in our voices sure. or whatever. Okay. Yeah. So we love to be challenged. And when they said, You can do her, can you can do a, an islander? I said, Sure. <laughs> but I did. Well, you know, that's a funny thing with accents now, uh, because years, for years, uh, every, every eventual British Australian accent was really up for grabs if you did it really well, and some of us do it really well and really authentically. And then there became this trend sure. of we only want authentic British yeah, people. Right. So that was gone. But then they, they turned around, and every American Southern character is now British. British. Yeah. Yeah. So, you know, so you figure it out. Yeah, yeah. Figure it out. Oh, oh, and now, way. now I'm hearing, and this is the absolute truth, we may be taking PC a little too far, just my opinion. If you're going to play a gay character, you need to be gay. Yeah, right. yeah. Well, yeah. Like, it's like, no, but I mean, it's like, you, you're an actor. That's right. An actor acts, does people other than themselves. That's right. And I'm not saying I don't have all the compassion in the world for everything that every underdog has ever been through, but actors act. It's just a very hard line. And yeah. you really, you don't know which way, but sometimes it feels like they overstep it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's just my opinion. I love that there's a couple of guys from The, uh, from the Walking Dead here. I got to know quite a number of the cast through these uh, Comic Cons, and I just love going up to them and talking to them. They say, Oh, yes, you watch the show. Oh, thank you very much. <laughs> exactly. No, you're right. Yeah. 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 Andrew Lincoln. Yeah, uh, very, very yeah. happy. Yeah. Yeah. Jackson playing on. Oh, my. Does he want to chat with you? Yeah. Sure. No, and you're right about that. And again, I, mean, I, I, I respect that. You know, Bert, I had Bernie Cattell on my podcast uh, about two years ago. And Bernie uh, Doc from the Love Boat, everybody in Stay Free from Get Smart. And he broke into acting, playing Hispanic roles. And he, just like Diane said, is like, listen, I get it. I understand today's circumstances and, and the appreciation. I would never even consider doing that. But for the longest time, he would get cast as Hispanics because that was the first role that he broke in with. Yeah, I mean, especially in the voice area. Because obviously on screen, even if you do a brilliant, you know, Southern uh, black man, you can't beat that guy. No. So, I mean, we understand. Sure. But with voices, you should have that, uh, you know, flexibility, you would think. Well, June Foray and all like, I mean, they did every dialogue under the sun. And yeah. that was right. then, and this is yeah. now. Sure. Did you, this is the new reality. Did you all have the opportunity to work with people like Bob Lank and June Foray? I worked with June Foray. Tell me about it. Uh, we did the uh, Tweety, Sylvester and Tweety show, oh. which was, I guess, was a spin-off later. And Andrea, again, thank you, Andrea. <laughs> uh, she cast me in that. I played a, 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 a very uh, uptight art critic or something like that, I think. But I got to work through Bray. Wow. Yeah. I met her. Really? Uh, through friends, but wow. I haven't worked with her, no. Awesome. Yeah, 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 we have a, we have a question. Please yeah. Hello. Uh, you mentioned some of the guest actors on the Batman animated series. Did you each have a particular guest actor that you enjoyed working with the most, or any that you didn't enjoy working with? <laughs> we would not have have you know. <laughs> Can I just say that we did Batman microphones in an arc. That's right. great. Everybody in one room, you cannot do that today. No. Everything is just piecemeal today from wherever they're Right, right. But now that was like a radio show. Everyone, all the actors showed up. We were in an arc, we were facing each other. My position was on my left was Ephraim Zimbalist Jr. Oh, wow! And on my right was Mark Hamill. 
Oh, right. <laughs> uh, excuse me, it just doesn't get any better. <laughs> That's my story. That's yeah. excellent. Well, yeah, we love Mark. I love working with Mark. He would stand up all the time, as yes. you know, Terrible. and use a lot of physicality for yes. his role. And yes. uh, you know, it wasn't like, oh my God, this guy's an eager. No, you know, when you when you bring it, that's okay. And, you know, Christian Bale brings it. He's always the way he is on the set. You can't break character, but you know what? Stare up on the screen. God bless him. Do whatever you want. That's how I feel. There. Well, a lot of the a lot of the people when I because I wouldn't know who was in the cast until right. I got there, yeah. and so I'd walk into the room, and there would be Roddy McDowell. Yeah. Wow! And it just it just blow my mind. Ed yeah, uh, Arnie Johnson. Yeah, yeah. did one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I honestly, and I, you're right. I wouldn't say anything if I did have anything, but everybody was wonderful and happy, and uh, you know, it was a very alive and just lovely. Especially was, the voiceovers. I have noticed that voiceover people. I'm going to be getting in trouble. Uh oh. Well, I'm going to say it anyway. Are on the whole nicer, less narcissistic people yeah. than people that make their living with their faces. Sure, that's true. Yeah. 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 I never heard you say that. That's a great question. That's a great question. Excellent. Yeah, Carl. Very cool. Yeah, please keep, don't be shy. I mean, obviously you want to keep your social distance, but no, we want to make sure everybody gets a chance to ask something. Please, sir. Hello. Uh, I just wanted to ask because I've listened to a lot of interviews about the show, and I heard there were two potential spinoffs at one point, sometime around four, with Catwoman almost got one and Nightwing almost got one. Ooh! And in today's age, since Batman Harley Quinn happened and Justice League Fatal Five happened, Warner Brothers has shown they're not done with this universe yet. So if something like that did occur today, is there a villain that you would have or would like to see <clears throat> Nightwing go up against, and how that would have gone on? Wow, what a great question. Yeah. I have no idea. <laughs> yeah, what have you, have you like, delved into beyond the scripts that you got, which were great, uh, but the history and everything? Well, well, yeah, well, over the years, actually, the fans, thank you, have educated me about uh, the universe. And so I have, of course, I didn't know anything about it when I was doing the character, but I was, uh, I have looked into it since, and I... Boy, I just can't. I just can't think of that. I know, I know who should play Nightwing, but it's um, <laughs> <laughs> so cool. And, and then also Diane, uh, you know, uh, Ivy and, and Harley Quinn are, are inseparable now. And I know you did a Gotham Girls thing. We did a wonderful Gotham Girls. It's called, and it was only on the internet. There you go. Yeah. And Arlene, Arlene Sorkin, who played the original right. Harley Quinn, is a very dear friend of mine. Not before the show, we became friends there. And we used to get together and do these little things back and forth and had the best time improvising and doing fun stuff. So it went on after the series, after, after I was no longer doing the series anyway. No, actually, I was still doing the series, yeah. And, um, but what they are now is different. And I have not really kept up with the current iteration, I have to be honest, uh, because it doesn't involve me. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God, I just said we were You're honest. Oh, no. But it's, it's true. Uh, so I don't know, but I know they've sort of made little innuendos and stuff, which is fine. Oh, no, they, they've got very blatant. There's, okay. there's, okay. there's a relationship there's between Harley and I. And more power to them, honey. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yes. No, it's a nice, it's a nice evolution. Yeah. It acknowledges the community in a great way, yeah. and, and if anything, it just gives uh, both characters more interesting things to exactly. do. Exactly, absolutely. So, yeah. thank, thank you. Great question. Then. Well, go ahead. Please come on up. Come yeah, on up I'm, I'm, I'm interested as, as they're walking up. Have you guys had an opportunity to do much audio drama now that yes. that has become more of a thing? I wish I did. No, I haven't. Bro, yeah. Mark, yeah. Uh -huh. Any, you want to check any, any shows that you've done? Well, uh, I've done books on tape. Okay, so, sure. so that's sure. Sure. Yeah. which it's not books on tape anymore. Is it? <laughs> Audio books. <laughs> yeah. So recorded books. Recorded books. So that's. Uh, <laughs> but you mean it actually like a, a radio? Yeah, improvisation like a radio show. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
Not yet. Not, no, no, I have way in the past, but I'm trying to think yeah, of it. Like, oh, I think I did something, and again, it's hazy to me, but yeah. Oh, well, that's what you meant, rather than like the old days. Of yeah, you know, because it yeah. really, I mean, because of podcasts. That's because it never yeah. come back again. Oh, well, sorry, I mean, honestly, there's a lot of really great audio drama happening now. I don't know where you are in the nerd. <laughs> So I love it. Yeah, we yeah, have agents on them, right? Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Yeah. Susan Eisenberg, my friend, who plays Wonder Woman on the Justice League cartoons, okay. um, they revised a great mystery anthology called Suspense, uh -huh. and we wrote a lot of the original stories and kind of modernized them, and okay. she does several of them, so it's a little bit great. So, okay. There you go. I'll look it up for you guys. Please, miss what you got. It's a Nightwing theme. I love it. Thank you, Mr. <laughs> <laughs> um, if Nightwing had an animated series, are you going to voice the character? Well, uh, right, right now, um, Bruce Tim, who uh, created Batman the Animated Series, and J.J. Abrams are doing a new Batman series. Yep. And we, none of us know if it's going to be in the universe of Batman the Animated Series, or it's going to be completely out of left field and go in a different direction. So we don't know. We haven't been told anything about it. Um, uh, we all hope that we're going to be doing it again, yeah, but who knows? Oh, yeah, I'm I'm oh, yeah. Had 30 years, so it's very possible that they'll recast everything. Yeah. It's just the fact that... But, but the fans, as I'm sure you all know, really do want the, the, they want the, the, the voices that, that we grew up with. Absolutely. <laughs> Keeps me in the loop on those things. And also, it seems like, and again, with no obligation met, I'm, I'm an outsider as well, but it sounds like Bruce Tim in particular, when he is in charge again of some animated project, does call on the old voices. Sometimes when they've had newer people who do great productions, a good friend of mine, James Tucker, had just wrapped up doing like, you know, eight years of uh, DC animated movies. He's like, well, you know, I've got to put my own stamp on it, so I've got my own group of actors that I go to, nobody will blame them. But like uh, someone said to uh, one of the earlier questions about the Justice League and the Fatal Five, they cast George from uh, the series, who's here this weekend, and they cast Susan and, and Kevin to, to be Batman and everything. And it's like, yeah, that's kind of what everybody wants. Well, Kevin probably has the job for life. <laughs> if he has the he can have the first refusal. He's so deep, yeah. He's really, yeah, he put a stamp on that. Well, you know, it, that's really true, and he's the he's the best at it, but there have been times when they have not cast him, and it's really befuddling to everybody. I mean, Kevin, not just Kevin, but all of us, we're like, you mean you got somebody who sounds like Kevin, and you didn't take Kevin? You know what I'm talking about, right? Yeah, yeah. So so I would hope that this new series, Bruce Timson, will at least have Kevin in it. I mean, come on. Yeah, we'll see. Yeah. Come on. Thank you. Oh, so the EPA series? Yeah. Is that going to happen? Well, you just said it. Sure. It's called Bouncing Cream. Hey, yeah. Hey, yeah. What for? I mean, what sounds like if you're Dick Grayson as Batman? What do you sound like? Oh, and you, yeah, you know what? There have been times when Dick has had to assume the role of Batman. Yeah. Batman is called Werbin, I'm sure. Yeah. Well, I think, I, you know, as you know in the comic books, uh, uh, Nightwing becomes Batman. So, uh, if I was to do that iteration of Dick Grayson, I would definitely be in the Kevin Connery universe. Absolutely. Would you Would you be able to give us a version of, of your Batman? Yeah. yeah. Do it. Do it. Um, 
a feature film kind of feel to it. So as far as the scripts are concerned, I, I think Alan was the father then, and, and Bruce was the father of the look of the show, and every, you know, I think they all they all had their you know incredible. Well, Paul Paul Gini did a lot of great stuff on there yeah. too. You know, he created yeah. Harley Quinn. Right. I mean, he just. It's really too hard to get. Yeah, and, and, and we're, we're not yeah. we're not playing. That. That's not a cop out either. He's, yeah. He's right. Yeah. I mean, like Jim Brooks was the guy on some of the shows, like The Simpsons. But then it gets delegated and other people. But uh, I think it's really a three prime in that. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Well, beyond the animated stuff, look at uh, the comic book stuff. Absolutely. And it's that combination of visual and audio and script that really made it what it was. Absolutely. Sure. Great question. Yeah. I just want to say, Mask of Fantastic is so fantastic. It's like, really you see what happened with the time, you see the horrifying vision of a child that he used to put his shoes on, evolve into this creature of vengeance now, is just pure perfection. Yeah. Did you, did, did you, anyone get to see it when it was in the theater? I did. A couple of people. All right, great. Kat, I got to tell you, and I'm sure there are people that saw it as well, what an experience seeing that on the big screen. And also, I got to even... The closing credits had this beautiful song by this great R&B singer, Saida Garrett. And I'm like, this is a real movie. I mean, you know, I know, I know all these animated movies being on the big screen. But, you know, back in the early 90s when it came out, it really was like, this is something special. And, you know, yeah, they, just, they, they took what they were doing on the TV and put it on the big screen. It was amazing. Wow. So, please, how you doing? Good. Um, so, a question for all of you guys is what was your favorite episode of the series? Like to work on or just in general? Good question. Very good. Me oh, first. Me first. Me first. Yeah. first. Yeah. Okay. Well, I have to be honest. I have to pick one that I did. <laughs> yeah. And there are other fine, fine episodes, but this particular one, the writers told me that they wanted to honor the fact that I had such depth as an actress, <laughs> bragging, um, and so they gave me Home and Garden, yep. Yep. Which, which gave me, as my character, the chance to not be only evil, Poison Ivy, but a yeah. mom and a wife and a mother, and in fact the ending is kind of so difficult because even though she discovers they're all planned, I mean, Batman discovers they're all plans and stuff like that, and she's hauled away to some asylum somewhere, yeah. I had a, a chance as an actor to really go through a, a lot more colors than usual. So that's my answer. Yeah, mine would be a bullet for bullet. Oh, yeah. You know, that one was fun. I got to see where he lived. I mean, I didn't think he lived in a penthouse somewhere, but he was <laughs> even more slovenly than I thought. And he also, Batman helps him, I believe, somewhere in there, and he grudgingly gives Batman some props or something, and then turns into uh, hating him again. That was fun. And also, because generally I would show up, and even though they gave me great lines, they were mostly along, you know, Batman's a wuss, he doesn't know what he's doing, <laughs> we need a real cop here and all, and, and Gordon trying to calm me down a little. And, but that was, yeah, I, that would come to mind. Uh, for me, it's old wounds because I got to play uh, Robin and Nightwing in the same. They showed Robin in the flashback. Uh, but there's one other episode that I'm very fond of too. Uh, if you're so smart, why aren't you rich? It's, it's it's the first time that Robin that the, they wrote it so that Robin helps solve the crime. Everything. Up until then, I was like, "What are we gonna do, Batman?" Sure. You know, <laughs> and in this one, in this one, he fi he figures it out, and, and Batman says. Very clever, Robin. <laughs> <laughs> uh, now, what another favorite is almost got him. No. Oh yeah. Oh sure. Oh, yeah. 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 Yes. Uh, yeah. Because we all we villains all got to work together. That day. We never knew each other because we would come in, we'd be villain of the week. That person would show up to be the villain. Was that in that? Yeah. Oh okay. No, no. Was was it a villain? I don't. I think it was just the villains. It was talking. just the villains. All that shirt. And they were all talking of right about how they. <laughs>
black suit Superman from the Snyder Cut Justice League? Wow, League? absolutely. Oh, wow. Like my fifth grade Dominican nun <laughs> teacher. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> Sister Roberta in, uh, in a hero costume. <laughs> Do you have another question? This is just something I wanted to say. Lauren, huge fan of Dick Grayson. Thank you. So He's much. such a fun character in my eyes. And Diane, my sister, absolutely loves Poison Ivy. Yeah. One of her favorite villains. She definitely gets a kick out of it. And your performance was a big part of that. Oh, oh, thank you so much. Lauren, one of my favorites that you gave was. Uh, and I don't remember the title of it, but it was uh, Nightwing and Catwoman together. Oh, yeah, uh, uh, scratch, yeah. Uh, scratch my back. Scratch my back. Scratch my back. That's it. Thank you, Matt. Yeah. Of course, you know. Very good. Excellent. Hey, no, it was great. That's, that's a good answer for uh, the guy who asked the question about the uh, villains. I would like to, to to do a Nightwing and Catwoman thing. That would be great. Yeah. Well, yeah. that's the thing. She really was kind of toying with Dick as, yeah. as he gets older and in that seductive way that she yeah. kind of operates and everything. Yeah. And that was good. That truly, man, that, that all three of you, <coughs> I, I think, exceeded expectations of what we got in the comics because you really did inject great personality in your performances. Thank you. Thank you. So, absolutely. Thank you. We'll check the time. Gosh, it is almost time to wrap up. Um, we are, uh, unfortunately, you know, in between panels, they want us to kind of, you know, Cleanse, I don't know what they're going to do. I have no idea. Spray a lot. Yeah, yeah exactly. I don't know what Absolutely. But uh, again, uh, all three of you and Batman as well, uh, thank you very much for thank you. what you guys did, uh, really, for the, for the Batman mythos. Thank you.